Hey everybody, welcome to PT Final Exam Series on just crash courses, various topics. Now, today we're going to be talking about pelvic rotation, especially as it applies to that supine to sit test. And we're also going to be talking a little bit about the treatment of, uh, you know, after you've done the supine to sit test. That's going to be our goal today. Just, just a, again, a very quick course on the whole idea of pelvic rotation and innominant rotation. So just briefly talking about the pelvis, uh, typically we refer to the whole pelvis, you know, both innominates are the pelvis. And then when we're talking about the specific innominates, we're talking about, you know, the right and the left innominate. So one of these, nominate is one of these, and we've got the right and the left, obviously. Now when we're talking about rotation, we have two directions. We have anterior rotation or posterior rotation, just like I did my hands. If you consider the pelvis like a bowl, if you tip it anteriorly, tip or dump everything out of the bowl, that's going to be anterior rotation. But if you tip it backwards and pull it, uh, in, in essence, uh, pull that pubic arch or the symphysis pubis upwards anteriorly, that's going to be a posterior pelvic rotation or posterior innominate rotation if you're moving just one side. Now, one of the key points I want to show, show you is that this SI joint, you know, it's obviously the axis of rotation when you're doing that. And so that S joint, SI joint is back here on this portion of the ilium, back here. So when we're talking, we're going to be talking specifically about how this portion of the ilium is the axis of rotation as you go anterior, you know, anteriorly down or posteriorly back. And uh, again, just talking about that briefly, if the pelvis, and so this is the anterior portion of the pelvis, if you look at it, this is the left pelvis looking at it from the side, acetabulum right there in the middle, symphysis pubis, as you bend, or as it goes into anterior rotation, it's going to come, in essence, tip downwards like this, and then posterior rotation is going to be just the opposite, coming backwards like this. All right, key point though is that it is rotating about this axis. So when we're talking about the supine to sit test, this is that same image I've taken and tipped it on its side to show supine to sitting of the left innominate looking at it from the lateral side. This is the left innominate looking at it from the lateral side. So the leg is obviously coming out of the acetabulum and heading down here to your foot. Now the supine to sit test involves checking leg length discrepancy and looking for differences that are related to the innominate, to one side or the other of the pelvis that is rotated either anteriorly or posteriorly. So in this case, again, talk about where the axis of rotation is back here. If the pelvis is rotated anteriorly, so let's talk about anterior rotation. If the pelvis is rotated anteriorly, what's going to happen is that, in essence, that pelvis has traveled down and around like this, meaning that the leg in supine will appear longer because of that rotation. Now, when we sit them up, and so in this case, they're sitting and then the leg is coming out like this. When we sit them up, that anterior rotation has done just that same thing, come down and around like that meaning that the leg will appear shorter. So in sitting, the leg will appear shorter. Now the opposite is true for posterior rotation. Same idea that if you have the pelvis rotated posteriorly, so this is anterior rotation, if you are rotated posteriorly, it's going to come up and around like that. Well, sorry, I should say that it's coming around, up and down like that is, is more accurate than this one. If it's rotating up and back like that, you're going to have exactly opposite. The supine will appear to have a shorter leg because it's pulled it up and back. And then when you're sitting, it will appear, again, we're talking functional leg length. The leg has not changed length. It's just the pelvis that is translating it like that. We have rotated up, and I guess I should, I'm, and what I'm trying to show is that it's rotating exactly opposite, meaning that it will appear longer in long sitting. 
So, like I said, posterior rotation in supine will appear shorter, but then when you sit them up, they will appear longer and vice versa for anterior rotation. Again, the key point is that the axis of rotation is all the way back here and the same part back here, meaning that the pelvis or that acetabulum is moving forward and around or down and back in each of those positions, just like I described. So what do you do to treat this? So let's say that they have a posterior rotated anominate. This is the axis of rotation. The anominate is rotated up and back posteriorly. In order to fix that, you need to rotate it anteriorly with, um, with a force that's going to pull it back into anterior rotation. So in that case, the hip flexors that hook onto the ASIS or the anterior superior iliac spine are going to pull it down and around like this, pull it back into anterior rotation. So if you're posteriorly rota rotated, you want those hip flexors to pull you down into anterior rotation. If you are anterior rota anteriorly rotated, then you want to be pulled back into posterior rotation. And the best way to do that is with the hamstrings that are pulling back here and pulling up like that. That will pull you into posterior rotation from an anterior position. So the way you know which one to do is based on one, their symptoms. So often they will have symptoms or be symptomatic on the side of the dysfunction. That makes a lot of sense. So if they're hurting at the left SI joint and their left leg appears to be longer in supine and then shorter in sitting, if it's anteriorly rotated, it means it's going to appear longer in, in supine and then shorter in sitting. Therefore, anterior rotation, you're going to try to pull that back with the hamstrings into, or yeah, use the hip extensors, pull it into posterior rotation on the side of the dysfunction. So there you go. Just a couple of key points with the posterior nominate. It will be shorter in supine and longer in sitting. And the converse is true for anterior nominate. It'll be longer in supine and shorter in sitting. And then the way you treat those is with an anterior nominate. You're, or, you know, if it's just one side anterior nominate, you're going to use those hamstrings to pull it into posterior rotation. And if it's a posterior nominate, you're going to use the rectus femoris or hip flexors to pull it into anterior rotation. So there you go. Just a quick guide, quick summary on the functional anatomy that's going on with the supine sit test and then how to treat it. And always as physical therapists, we test, treat, and then retest and look for... Uh, any sort of improvement in symptoms or in leg length discrepancy in this case. So again, thank you very much for listening. PT Final Exam, check it out, ptfinalexam.com. You can follow us on Facebook or check out the other awesome videos we've got here. Your awesome resource getting ready for the NPT. Thanks.